from the grey streets of Edinburgh to the glaring spotlight. Gordon Strachan's journey through football is a tale of triumph, turbulence, and a personal battle with depression ignited by his own words on sensitive issues. Gordon Strachan's journey to football prominence began in the bustling city of Edinburgh, Scotland, where he was born on February 9, 1957. Raised in a working-class family, Strachan grew up in an environment where football was a beloved pastime, igniting his passion for the game from a young age. The streets of Edinburgh and the local parks became the proving grounds for his budding talent. From an early age, Strachan exhibited a fierce determination and a natural affinity for football. Despite his relatively small stature, he demonstrated an exceptional work ethic and a tenacious spirit on the pitch, traits that would become hallmarks of his playing and coaching style. Strachan's early life was characterized by a deep love for football, with every opportunity seized to play and improve his skills, often participating in games with friends and local youth teams. Strachan's family, though not affluent, supported his burgeoning passion for football, encouraging his aspirations despite the inherent challenges. His father, a keen football enthusiast, played a significant role in nurturing his son's talent, instilling in him the values of hard work, perseverance, and humility. During his formative years, Strachan attended Broughton High School, where he further honed his footballing skills and competitive nature. It was here that he began to attract attention for his performances, laying the groundwork for a career that would see him rise from the grassroots of Scottish football to international fame. Gordon Strachan's professional journey began at Dundee, where he signed at the age of 14, choosing the Scottish club over Manchester United due to a perceived better chance of first-team action. His talent quickly shone through in the reserve team, earning him the Scottish Reserve Player of the Year award twice. Strachan made an impactful first-team debut at 18, showcasing his skill against seasoned players like Arsenal's Alan Ball, drawing comparisons to the great Billy Bremner, the 1975-76 season marking the inception of the Scottish Premier Division saw Strachan participate in 17 league matches, establishing himself as a regular in the team. However, Dundee faced relegation in a heartbreaking turn of events, as Dundee United narrowly surpassed them on the last season. At just 19, Strachan was named Dundee's captain for the 1976-77 campaign, becoming the youngest to hold the position. Despite his leadership, Dundee struggled in the lower division. Strachan's time with the club was marred by challenges, including a disciplinary issue involving a drinking session with Jimmy Johnston. Manager Tommy Gemmell noted Strachan's frequent targeting by opponents aimed at neutralising Dundee's creative force. Faced with the club's dim prospects for immediate top-flight return and financial pressures, Strachan departed Dundee in October 1977 after an embarrassing 6 zero defeat to Queen of the South. In November 1977, Strachan moved to Aberdeen for £50,000, facing a difficult first season marked by form struggles and injuries. Despite these challenges, he found success with the reserve team, capturing the Scottish Second Eleven Cup in 1978. The arrival of manager Alex Ferguson in 1978 was a turning point. Strachan played a crucial role in Aberdeen's success, contributing to the team's league title win in 1979-80 after a remarkable comeback against Celtic. Despite losing the League Cup final to Dundee United, Strachan's performance earned him the SFWA Footballer of the Year award. Aberdeen's pursuit of excellence continued, with Strachan central to their efforts. The 1981-82 season ended with a Scottish Cup victory, where Strachan's skill was instrumental. The 1982-83 season was a highlight, with Aberdeen claiming both the Scottish Cup and the European Cup Winners' Cup, defeating Real Madrid in a historic final. Gordon Strachan's tenure at Manchester United was marked by both high expectations and challenges. In August 1984, Strachan moved to Old Trafford for a substantial fee of £500,000. This transfer was complicated by a previous pre-contract agreement Strachan had with one. FC Colne, which led to Manchester United paying an additional £75,000 in compensation to resolve the dispute. Strachan's early days at United were promising, with him scoring four goals in his first seven matches and showing signs of becoming a key player for the team. The 1984-85 season saw Manchester United finish fourth in the first division, but it was marked by a significant achievement as the team won the FA Cup. 
Strachan played a crucial role in the final against Everton, participating in the build-up to Norman Whiteside's match-winning goal in extra time, which showcased his tireless work ethic and footballing intelligence. The following season started spectacularly for United, winning their first 10 league games. However, Strachan's campaign was marred by injury, which significantly affected the team's performance. United struggled to maintain their early momentum and eventually finished fourth again. This period of inconsistency and injury woes culminated in the replacement of manager Ron Atkinson with Alex Ferguson in November 1986. Under Ferguson, Strachan faced a challenging period. His form was inconsistent, and the team finished a disappointing 11th in the 1986-87 season. However, they improved to secure a second-place finish in the 1987-88 season. Despite the team's better performance, Strachan's individual form continued to fluctuate, and by the 1988-89 season, United had slipped back to an 11th-place finish, highlighting a period of transition and adaptation for both Strachan and the club under Ferguson's management. Gordon Strachan's move to Leeds United marked a significant chapter in his career, demonstrating his influence and leadership in English football. In March 1989, after a bid from Sheffield Wednesday was accepted, Leeds United stepped in matching the offer, which led to Strachan signing with them instead, despite the club's second division status at the time. His arrival at Elland Road was met with enthusiasm, drawing comparisons to Leeds legends and setting the stage for a remarkable tenure. Strachan, who signed a two-year contract and was immediately made captain, proved instrumental in Leeds United's rise from the second division. His leadership and experience in the midfield, alongside Vinnie Jones, were pivotal in securing the second division title in the 1989-90 season. His impact was not just on the field, but also in establishing a winning mentality within the squad. Leeds' return to the first division saw Strachan at the heart of a formidable midfield quartet, including Gary McAllister, David Batty and Gary Speed. The team's success continued, with a fourth-place finish in the 1990-91 season and reaching the League Cup semi-finals. Strachan's exceptional performances during this period earned him the FWA Footballer of the Year award, making him the first to win the accolade in both Scotland and England. Strachan's leadership was further validated in the 1991-92 season when he captained Leeds to the league title, edging out Manchester United and denying his former boss, Alex Ferguson, the championship. Despite battling sciatica and a recurring bad back, Strachan's commitment and skill remained evident, contributing significantly to Leeds' success and earning him an OBE for services to sport. Leeds' inability to build on their league-winning campaign saw them finishing 17th in the Premier League season, but Strachan's personal performances remained high, earning him the club's Player of the Year award and notching memorable moments like a hat-trick against Blackburn Rovers. The 1993-94 season saw Strachan managing 37 starts and helping Leeds to a fifth-place finish. However, by the 1994-95 season, his appearances became less frequent, signalling the end of his impactful six-year stint at Elland Road, where he left an indelible mark both as a player and a leader. Gordon Strachan's international career with Scotland is as eventful and distinguished as his club journey. He earned his first Scotland cap, on May 16, 1980, in a match against Northern Ireland, setting the stage for a significant international career. Strachan played a key role in Scotland's qualification for the 1982 FIFA World Cup, notably scoring the decisive goal against Sweden, which underscored his importance to the national team. In the 1982 World Cup held in Spain, Strachan's performances were a highlight for Scotland, particularly in their 5-2 victory over New Zealand, where he was named man of the match. Despite Scotland's eventual exit on goal difference after a draw with the Soviet Union, Strachan's World Cup outing was memorable for his skill and leadership on the field. The 1986 World Cup qualification campaign was marked by tragedy when Jock Stein, the Scottish manager, died of a heart attack. Alex Ferguson took over, with Strachan continuing to be a vital team member. Although Scotland's journey in the tournament in Mexico was challenging, culminating in group stage elimination despite Strachan's memorable goal against West Germany. Under Andy Roxburgh's management, Strachan saw a decline in his national team involvement, missing out on the 1990 World Cup. However, he experienced a resurgence, captaining Scotland during the Euro 1992 qualifiers before announcing his retirement from international football due to persistent back issues. Throughout his international career, Strachan won 50 caps, 
and scored five goals, leaving behind a legacy of being a passionate and influential player for Scotland, known for his fighting spirit and technical abilities on the global stage. Gordon Strachan's transition from player to manager was a natural progression in a career marked by footballing intelligence and leadership. His management career began at Coventry City in 1996, where he initially served as assistant manager before taking the helm. Strachan's tenure at Coventry was notable for his efforts to keep the club in the Premier League against the odds, showcasing his tactical acumen and ability to motivate his squad in challenging circumstances. After departing Coventry, Strachan took charge of Southampton in 2001, where his impact was immediate. He led the Saints to an eighth-place finish in the Premier League and a memorable run to the FA Cup final in 2003. Strachan's style of management, characterised by a mix of discipline and encouragement, helped Southampton achieve consistent performances and defy expectations. In October 2005, Strachan embarked on a highly successful period with Celtic in the Scottish Premier League. Under his guidance, Celtic dominated Scottish football, winning three consecutive league titles from 2005 to 2008. Strachan's tenure at Celtic was not just about domestic success. He also made significant strides in European competitions, leading the team to the last 16 of the UEFA Champions League twice. His ability to blend tactical knowledge with effective player management was key to Celtic's success during this period. Strachan's approach to management is built on a foundation of clear communication, strategic planning, and an innate understanding of the game. His experiences as a player at the highest level have informed his managerial style, allowing him to connect with players and instill a winning mentality. Despite his often humorous and light-hearted demeanor in public, Strachan is known for his serious approach to training and match preparation, emphasizing hard work, discipline, and tactical flexibility. After leaving Celtic, Strachan had stints with Middlesbrough and then moved on to manage the Scotland national team in 2013. As Scotland's manager, Strachan faced the challenging task of revitalising a national side that had struggled to make an impact on the international stage. His tenure saw Scotland narrowly miss out on qualification for major tournaments, but Strachan's work was recognised for bringing a sense of belief and competitive spirit back to the national team. Gordon Strachan's journey in the football world took an emotional turn following a controversial episode that impacted his career as a broadcaster. Strachan faced significant backlash after making comments that were perceived as equating the serious nature of racism in football with the criminal actions of former player Adam Johnson. This incident led to Sky Sports, where Strachan frequently appeared as a pundit, deciding to discontinue their association with him. The fallout from this event deeply affected Strachan, leading to a personal struggle with depression. The intensity of the public and media reaction caused him considerable distress, affecting not just his professional life, but also his personal well-being and that of his family. Strachan's description of feeling persecuted, humiliated and embarrassed highlights the profound impact that public scrutiny and criticism can have on individuals in the spotlight. Strachan's admission of his mental health struggles in the wake of the controversy is a candid revelation of the challenges he faced. He expressed remorse for his clumsy mistake, emphasizing the heartbreak and regret over the incident and its aftermath. This episode in Strachan's life serves as a reminder of the pressures and consequences public figures often face in their careers, and how a single misjudged comment can lead to far-reaching personal and professional ramifications. Strachan's experience underscores the importance of mental health awareness and the need for support and understanding in dealing with the fallout of public controversies. Gordon Strachan's personal life has been deeply intertwined with football, not just through his own career, but also within his family. In 1977, Strachan married Leslie Scott, with George Mackey serving as his best man, cementing a union that would extend into a family deeply rooted in the sport. Together, they raised three children, Craig and Gavin Strachan, who followed in their father's footsteps to become footballers, and Gemma Strachan. The legacy of football in the Strachan family continued with his grandson Luke, who emerged as a promising talent within the youth setup at Dundee. Notably, during this time, Gordon Strachan held the position of technical director at the club, further blending his professional and personal worlds. This continuation of the football tradition in the Strahan family underscores Gordon's profound influence and the shared passion for the game that runs through generations. 
The dynamics of the Strachan family, with multiple generations involved in football, highlight a deep bond and a shared journey in the sport, illustrating how Gordon's love for and dedication to football have become a family legacy. This connection offers a glimpse into the personal side of Strachan, revealing a man whose life has been significantly shaped by his love for football, both on and off the field.